You were supposed to go under. You were sub. That car was supposed to be crushed. There was attempt after attempt. The foremost thing that the enemy wanted was not to cripple you. He just wants to make sure you're no more breathing. Because the enemy knows, as long as the breath is left in her, she is going to use that breath. Everything that has breath, praise. The Lord. Hey, Pastor. Hey, Pastor Steve. That's the button that Jenny bought. It's an adventure button. Adventure button. What am I wearing? Let's do it again. What, my beautiful, 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 most amazing, my favorite child of my old age son. Father, I had another dream. Another one. Joseph, Here's your slave boy, you know these are not my favorite color flowers. Sorry. And I'm hot. Find me my fan. Okay. Are you there? Fetch me the lesser crown. Yes. I appoint you something, something or other, someone important. Thank you, Pharaoh. Mm. Jesus. Lift him up. gives you a testimony, when you don't bring it into the house of God, the enemy is stealing it. God does something, you don't acknowledge it, you don't give God the glory. Essentially, you got a gift, but the enemy has stolen the thunder behind it. So refuse to allow that. Refuse to allow that. Pastor Kala, you should have a testimony too, right? When I said thunder, 
I just remembered boom 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 they don't know about it hey, you should you should come 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 Let, let's take time for you see i want you to understand spiritual significance because you are in a prophetic house you have to understand there is no coincidences i am about to preach everything starts becoming very heightened in the spirit realm i look down last week he sitting there with this italian flag in his pocket <laughs> you don't understand that provoked my spirit it stirred up something in me because out of everybody there was a man believing god for his nation and he's sitting there saying you know and and later on he was telling me how he said what better place to be than to carry this representing asking god for a revival okay so i am going to preach not knowing what happened not knowing his thoughts not knowing his desire for revival in italy none of that and what am i doing i can't go into the sermon i'm being stirred to point that out so most of you will be thinking that oh pastor is making a joke and some of you didn't notice i look straight into his eyes whoever wins god is giving that nation a second chance listen i had to i had to fight hard not to look at these both i was struggling not to look at them i was like who else i told look at them don't look at them because the uk time will come it will come it will come but now i feel like something is happening for italy and and then after that something happened that's the part they don't know go go ahead pastor so i got in touch with the man of god and uh, he he writes to me after i heard that prophecy that whoever wins will get the second chance and and th- this is the month that the violent take it by force and i jumped at that chance because that's my heart's desire is to see could, you know my, the nation of italy going wild the way that they went wild for a soccer ball that they can go crazier for jesus because no better place can we receive revival from this ministry because it is called revive nations and i decided to stand in the gap for the nation of italy and what happened was that he writes the third thunder will get the second rain and and the the game wasn't over yet so i didn't understand what that meant you know how in the bible there's many prophecies that they didn't understand it until it came into being so i was i wrote back i said i i don't know what that means what does that mean the third thunder brings the second rain and then the third penalty goal goes in and it was 3 2 and i receive a text boom 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 come on today i hear that sound echo boom 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 i i don't usually I don't usually watch football but that just the fact that he brought his his flag representing his nation that the fact that he thought through that he spent time preparing that and brought it stirred up the spirit please read that man of god uh, genesis 37 verse 20 onwards please come now therefore mm-hmm. and let us slay him mm-hmm. and cast him into some pit mm-hmm. and we will say some evil beast hath devoured him okay the moment comes where joseph is now reaching his brothers and i told you demons that would not have otherwise manifested in the presence of their father was now taking over these brothers and murderous spirits were now contending to kill their brother joseph and they were not usually normally murderous people but the distance had created a spirit to have greater influence on them and a murdering spirit was now taking over them to destroy the destiny of this young 17 year old young man that was walking towards them so by force they were already a majority 
by age they were already a majority by strength they were already a majority but yet in a shocking moment all of them put their strength against a little boy because the spirits that were fighting this little boy or the spirits that was influencing the murdering brothers did not see a little boy some of you think that everybody around you are supposed to cut you some slack some of you think that your boss is not being fair with you some of you think that your family is not nice to you some of you think that your your brothers and sisters are not nice to you but this is what i want you to understand they don't see a little boy they see a spiritual giant inside that little boy the spirits that are stirring up the brother can see that he is not a little boy he is a giant in the spirit and the boy himself does not know about it so some of you the reason why you're still coming to the church and say pray for me pray for me pastor pray for me brother pray for me somebody pray for me you're looking for somebody to make eye contact so that they can come in agreement with you and pray for you because you don't know who you are so if there is one thing that can happen to a child of god is change your perspective and say i am not a victim here i am the vip <laughs> you are the very important person that hell has collected all its resources invested all his majority invested people invested lies invested media invested the chief priests invested everybody against one guy because you're not the victim you are the vip here so i want you to change your perspective and the first thing that they wanted to do with that murdering spirit the first thing is the, the plot to murder the plot to murder when the enemy smells the oil of god on your life the child of god he is not looking to cripple you the first attempt against you is to murder you to kill you to finish you the enemy is not compassionate at all one more time the enemy is not compassionate at all he is not going to look at a hey, manosi antarakasia he is not going to look at a little child and say oh this is only a little child we will attack him when he is 18 years old they killed thousands of children just in order to kill little moses just so that they can kill baby jesus the king ordered thousands of children to be killed satan does not show compassion some of you are like but i'm just a girl but the devil doesn't see you as just a girl because for what he knows you might just be the deborah that plans and strategize the demise of the kingdom of darkness a robregez the spirit of the lord is speaking to some people very accurately that you are not a little child you are not a little girl you are not a little boy the spirit of darkness that that know and see the brightness of your light wants to at any cost finish you up finish you that's that's the goal the goal is not to hurt you the goal some of you are already upset because you were sad that you 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 lost this you didn't get through this interview you really think that the devil was after your interview You really think that the devil wanted to give you a flat tire? No, 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 no. The devil wanted to see you 6 feet under. He wanted to finish you. He wanted to kill you. You know the other day I was looking at somebody and prophetically the Holy Spirit said the reason for her ingratitude is that she doesn't know how much of salvation 
that I have released upon her. Because sometimes when there is no trouble and God has protected you and blessed you and you're part of this house, you're growing, you're loving Jesus and everything is fine, you don't realize how many death threats you had. You don't understand how many assassination attempt that God saved you from. You're worried and sad about the little bump and you're like, oh, I got to spend $300 on that bump now. But you didn't know. You were supposed to go under. You were sub that car was supposed to be crushed. There was attempt after attempt. The foremost thing that the enemy wanted was not to cripple you. He just wants to make sure you're no more breathing. Because the enemy knows as long as some breath is left in her, she is going to use that breath, everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Hari. <laughs> I didn't come to make you happy. I came to lead you into your breakthrough. <laughs> and the way we take you from glory to glory is if God can see a group of people that their heart is overflowing with gratitude, their mouth is overflowing with praise, their hearts are overflowing with worship. If God can find a worshiper that does not care about who is watching them, who is looking at them, they will enter into the room, break the alabaster jar, and partake of the glory. You see, what the lady did was she broke the alabaster jar and partook of the glory that was greater. The alabaster jar in the hands of that woman was her priciest possession. But by breaking that at the feet of Jesus, she partook of something that was more greater, more than what she could afford, was in the room. The way you can afford that which you cannot afford is by giving your everything. So when we come and give the Lord everything, you are essentially pausing, freezing, canceling, destroying every plan of the enemy that is against you and your house and your family and your children. I want you to know that when you come here and you're clapping hands and you're praising Jesus and you're saying, God, you are good. What you're doing is you're canceling, you are canceling, you are canceling murderous attempts of the enemy. One more time, I'm going to declare that today, starting from today, murderous attempts over your life is cancelled in Jesus.